Welcome to Age Play Confidential, a show where I talk about everything and anything ABDL related. I am your absolute super host, Super B, and I am sitting here in my basement having a little bit of shivers on the rocks right before New Year's, and I figured let me do one of these podcasts. Okay, I got to be consistent with this. Because the last thing I want to do is just say, hey, I got a podcast and never fucking post anything. And so here I am doing this podcast. And I figured today I wanted to talk about sexual versus non-sexual littles. Now, I am a very, very sexual little. Um, uh, If you heard my podcast last week... um, how I discovered this whole diaper thing when I was five, right? I uh, let's recap. Um, let's let's go back in time and recap. So I went and snuck into my mom's uh, closet. I pulled out a Pampers from the Pampers box. I disrobed. I put it on. Blah blah blah. It looked great. It felt great. And then when I took it off, I noticed that I had a little five-year-old boner, right? And at the time, I didn't know what it is, but now. Looking back, you're like, "Uh uh-huh, my body was telling me this is a good thing. This feeling that you just had around your crotch, this diaper, this plastic with the padding, it felt good. It felt very good. And although I didn't know what the hell it meant at the time, it was pretty much saying this is sexual. And that's pretty much what triggered this whole thing with me going forward. And so... I think it's always been sexual. It's never been something that I use to regress for anything like that. I mean, I do. I do. uh, But it's not the primary reason, right? Uh, When I go into these, when I try to be little, like if I'm going to be little by myself in my house and I go and set up the crib and the play gym and the high chair, it's kind of so that, uh, all right, all right. (laughs) All right, how can I... For the most part, it's for me to take pictures, right? So that I can post on my Instagram. But it it is also for me to kind of get a little, like, you know, get horned up, you know? I, I get set, I'll put the diaper on, I have an, I have an erection, um, and um, it feels good. I mean, fuck it. You're, you're wrapping something around your crotch, your genitalia the white powder, the smell of it, the look of everything around you, that just all is so erotic. It just turns me on. Anything that makes me feel little, anything that makes me look little, I'm down for. It's kinky as fuck. And, like, it's really, like, like, but I think I'm desensitizing myself to a lot of this stuff because back in the day, right, when I first started, like, buying diapers, all I had was a blue... Um, a blue soft blanket, right, that I would lay on the bed or I would lay on the floor and then I would put my diaper on and then that was it. That was all I needed and, and I was fine, right? But over the years, slowly but surely, I started adding more things to my, um, I don't know, my ABDL um, arsenal, I guess, if you want to call it. Um, I bought a onesie, um, I bought some toys, um, I bought the first major, I guess, quote unquote thing is I bought these safety gates, which I made into like a play pen, right? That I saw at Lowe's. I was like, wow, these, these look like railings for a play pen. I, I'm going to buy these things. And, and I bought it and I set it up in my living room. And, and then, you know, slowly but surely again, that increased and I got a play, then I made a play gym. Then that, then I found out that the 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 uh, um, the play pen, the the gates, they fit perfectly on my king queen size bed. So now it became a crib. And then again, so slowly over the years, I I kept adding more things to my arsenal, and uh, I needed that. I needed more of these things for me to help to help me feel little, to help me, well, not to help me feel little. Um, to get me off, I guess. You know what I'm saying? 
So like the environment, right? Me, if I'm so if I'm laying in the crib, right, and I'm looking around and I see the mobile hanging and everything, and I kind of glance down that I'm wearing a diaper and I'm like, oh my god. I'm an adult and I'm in a crib and this is not what I should be doing and it's so fucking hot, right? You know what I'm saying? Like this is like, these are the things I'm thinking. You know, I'm trying to give you what I think when I'm when I'm when I'm wearing a diaper, when I'm being little, right? Uh, and then you know, or or I'll just grab the front of my diaper because like I can't believe you're wearing a diaper. Like you're an adult, you shouldn't be wearing these diapers. But oh my god, here you are. You're so fucking, you know, like. And then that shit turns me on, right? Like I'm psyching myself up, you know, to, to, to get turned on and everything like that. But at the end of the day, it's it's sexual for me, right? And um, the more things I add the more sexual it gets. And um, sometimes, though, sometimes, though, I'll be honest, I'll set everything up and I'll put the diaper on, I'll lay in the crib, and I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm just going to relax here. I'm just going to relax and just try to be little and uh, enjoy it, you know? Um, because it's not always 100% sexual. I can't fucking walk around, you know, while I'm in the diaper with a boner the whole entire time. Obviously, it's just it goes away a little bit. Uh, but things here and there uh, may get pop up, right? Um, and for the most part, you know, these days I'll set up my stuff, and uh, it's really for for pictures and stuff for Instagram and, and things like that. And but here's the thing, though, right? Maybe at the time I'm doing it, it's not sexual. But let's say I take a good picture or I have a good video. And it's depicting me kind of acting like very infantile, like really infantile. Like when I, when I'm talking about infantile, I'm like zero to three months old infantile, right? Like I got that shit down. That's me. At the end of the day, my little space is me being infant, and and that is as baby as you can get, right? And maybe while I'm recording the content, it's not too sexual, but once I post it and I see people liking it. And I see myself acting that way, that turns me on. Do you see what I'm saying? Like I like seeing myself be act like this. And I don't know if you want to call that a little narcissistic or whatever. Um, but um it's weird, right? It's weird how like while I was doing it, I wasn't really that that turned on. But now looking back, I'm like, boy, I wish I was in that position right now because that shit looks hot and then I'm sitting here fucking playing with myself or whatever. <laughs> TMI, TMI. But that's, I mean, I'm just telling you like it is. Telling you the, the more babyish I look, the hotter it is for me. And I think there are a lot of people out there that, that, that are the same way that might like seeing themselves in these positions because it turns them on, because whatever, right? So whenever I ever have like an interaction with a mommy, I make sure to record all the diaper changes for sure because at the end of the day, you know, I'll take that, I'll edit it out, and I'll blur my face or whatever, and I'll, maybe I'll post it, but it's a turn-on, you know? If I need to relieve myself, you know, maybe crank one out, <laughs> crank one out when I'm feeling a little stressed out or whatever, I'll plop on one of my changing videos, one of the videos of somebody changing me, and I'll just go off on it, you know? And um, the more realistic I portray myself as an infant, the hotter it is, um, and and you know I've, I've I've spoken to others that felt the same way, um, and um, you know I think uh, I think there are a lot of us out there now. That, of course, now you have your your non-sexual littles, which I just don't get. You know, like I don't I don't get how their minds work because that's not me. I'm not a non-sexual little. I'm completely fucking sexual, and so like a lot of people, you know, they'll 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 regress a little just to to cope with stress or, or, or whatnot and and um, I just don't understand and I'm trying to understand maybe if you're a non-sexual little please comment below how you cannot get turned on by um, this diaper being wrapped around your genitalia like right even if it's it, it, it has to feel good physically maybe not maybe you're not thinking oh I want I want to have sex you know what I'm saying? Like, I, maybe I don't want, you know, but there has to be some sort of good feeling. I mean, you're working with your genitals there, right? You know, it's like whether you're a woman or a guy, 
if you're applying if the powder if the powder is being applied to my nutsack and my <laughs> and my penis, that is very erotic. I mean, any just touching of that area is just so fucking hot, you know. Especially if I'm laid out there with my legs spread open and there's a diaper under my ass. Like it's just so for me that's hot. Like I don't know. Um, I know I know I am not the only one. I know there's plenty of you guys out there that are like that. But the the non sexuals though, like um, you know, maybe it's a coping mechanism. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm not like that though. I'm not that type of little. Like I cannot. Some people be like, ah, I was coloring and it, and I felt like it, it got me into little space. Or I was watching a cartoon and it got me into little space. No. <laughs> That never happens for me. I cannot watch a cartoon. I cannot sit there in color and get into little space. It's just not how it works for me. Put me in a diaper and talk to me like I'm an infant. Yeah, I'll get into little space. But everything is centered around the diaper. Okay? That's it. I, I, I don't... Do you, I guess then... Am I really a little, or is this just a kinky fetish? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm still trying to figure out um, exactly where I am in this thing. I like to act like a baby. I I, I do. It just feels good. Um, but um, I guess that makes me a little. <laughs> I mean, I look, if I had to interact with a mommy, and of course... I'm not going to be aroused the whole time. Maybe I will. I don't know. But, you know, um, I'm not going to be aroused the entire time. And there's going to be that dynamic where she's talking to me like an infant or a baby or a toddler. And, and I'm interacting like that. Um, yeah. And that's then and that's fine. That's part of the whole thing. But at the end of the day, the, the end goal is we're both going to get our our pleasure out of this, our sexual pleasure out of this. And um, I guess diaper sex is the ultimate goal. Um, which I've never had, but I have had diapered masturbation, I guess, where uh, the mommy or caregiver would apply pressure to my rock-hard diaper, and uh, I would gyrate until I finished, or they use the vibrator. Oh, my God. Um, I All right, so I was in Las Vegas very recently, and uh, I met up with... Um, a Navy deal friend of mine and um, we had some play time together and uh, she used the vibrator on me. I've never had a vibrator used on me. And so um, she already got me going and uh, she was doing the old press the hand on the front of the diaper thing as I was gyrating. And then she whipped out her vibrator and I was like, okay. And as soon as she applied it, dude, I was done, done. Boom. Squirt, squirt. <laughs> yeah, that was good. I, I'm going to have to buy me one of those uh, uh, vibrator thingamajigs. Um, but never had the diaper sex. And so um, obviously that's something that I would like to experience, but it's not like uh, the end-all be-all right now at this moment. Uh, because at the end of the day, if I'm actually going to get into um, – if I'm going to get that far into the sexual activity with somebody, they, they need to, it's just not a, I don't want it to be a one-off. You know what I'm saying? It's like a lot of my encounters with, with mommies, caregivers, it's been a one and done thing. I've met them up. I met up with them once we've had fun and, um, that was it, you know, and, and for the most part they weren't sexual. But, uh, if I am going to get to that point, uh, where we do have diaper sex, obviously it's got to be with somebody that, that I really care for, you know, and, and uh, that's probably going to be a while. It's probably going to be a while because um, at this moment right now, um, you know, I, I don't, I, I haven't connected with anybody at that level yet, you know. And uh, I, want it, I want it to be special. I guess I'm sentimental like that where uh, if I'm going to go all the way with somebody that uh, I, I really do want it to be special. I want them to want it, not just, just to do it. Um, I want them to see me in an infantile state and I want them to be turned on you know that for me will be a turn on and uh, it'll just get me aroused and then they'll be aroused because I'm aroused and it's just it'll just be a perfect storm of whatever and um, you know uh, that's I think <laughs> what am I saying that's I think that's all of our dreams isn't it 
all of us sexual littles who, who want to have something like that, you know. Um, but, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, in conclusion, I'm a sexual fucking little. For sure. Everything about it is sexual. Whether I am the daddy or I am the little, it's sexual. And the more authentic the role play is, the more turned on I am. So last year, uh, well, technically this year, but today's the last day of the year, but in March, I, I took care of a little, and she wanted to, to feel infant, and that's right up my alley, you know, and um, and she really got into the headspace, and she was babbling, and, and she was, you know, fussing in her diapers, and, uh, and that turned me on, like, to no end. It turned me on to no end, but I had to behave myself because she had a boyfriend who allowed her to see me but didn't want anything to get sexual. But it, you know how hard it was? <laughs> no pun intended, but how hard it was to be so aroused by what I saw and not act on it. Mm -mm -mm. And we had good chemistry. That's the thing. If she was single, that shit would have happened. We had such good chemistry. Um... You know, and you know, you, you kind of know when, when you meet somebody that there's a vibe there. Like, it, it just feels right. And it felt right. And unfortunately, you know, we met at the wrong time, you know. And, and um, actually, her, her, her boyfriend kind of put a stop to us meeting up. Um, and so, um, you know, hopefully she's getting her fulfillment um, somehow. You know, I kind of feel bad because her boyfriend isn't into it. Uh, but. Um, hey, look, it is what it is. Uh, but, man, I think that was the closest I ever got to feeling what it would be like to kind of go the full distance and everything like that. So, And she was a sexual little as well. So um, all the interactions that we had, uh, it turned her on. Oh, it turned her on so bad. And so there was a lot of like this built up sexual tension between us that we really could not act upon. Um, all right, let me, let me backtrack. I lie. I lie. We acted upon it, sort of. Okay, let me, let me give you the full story real quick, okay? I met this girl twice. The second time, I behaved myself because of what happened the first time. Okay, now let's, let's tell you the full story. So, she reached out to me. Uh, on Instagram, uh, she was following my daddy account, and she loved my point of view video. She loved everything about him, and uh, sh I guess she saw that I babied a few uh, a few other girls there, and that I posted some content. And then she reached out. She goes, "Listen, uh, I like your content. I think it's great. I think you 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 make a great daddy. I was wondering if you wouldn't mind, in a platonic way, babying somebody." And I was like, sure. You know, I was like, yeah. I mean, she, she reached out to me and uh, we started talking. I, I found, you know, I was back and forth. You know, she was a real person. And I said, sure. You know, um, I wouldn't mind doing that. That'll be fine. She goes, yeah, I have a boyfriend and uh, doesn't want anything sexual to happen. I said, listen, I'll behave myself. Okay, no problem. All right, cool, cool. So uh, we made plans to meet up. I drove down to see her. I brought the crib. I brought the high chair. I brought everything, right? So the whole works just to give her a good experience because this is the first time she's ever being babied. And I'm like, if, if I'm going to be the one babying you, it's going to be the best fucking experience you ever had. Okay? Okay. So, um, obviously, she's a little shy. It's her first time, but I make her feel comfortable. I, I, you know, I put her in a diaper. She also likes to be treated like an infant, Okay, so that's right on my alley, right? So, um, so I put the diaper on, and then you know, you know, we're cuddling and everything like that, and I give her the diaper pads and all that stuff. She loves it, and I'm giving her diaper pads on the crotch, and then I start saying stuff like, and this is what really turned her on, right here. This is the shit that really turned her on, is when I said stuff like, "Hmm, look at you, you're 23 years old, and wearing a diaper like a baby. What would your college friends say?" What will your colleagues at work say? Like, what would, and I would start saying things like that. You know, what would, you know, the regular, the adults say? What would they all say? Like, what if I invited them over and they saw you here babbling like a little infant uncontrollably wetting your diaper? That shit turned her 
on. And so while I was saying this stuff, I would be patting the front of her diaper. And then she, her hips would be just, you know, she'd be just like gyrating. And you could just sense that she's getting turned on. And when I said certain words or certain phrases, the, the, it, she, it would get more intense for her. And she, what she called it, like when she got really like hot and sexually aroused, she'd say butterflies in her baby voice. Dada butterflies. Right. And I was like, uh huh. And, uh, you know, at first we never discussed what butterflies mean, but I quickly caught on. So whenever she said butterflies, I would press a little harder on the front of her diaper and I'd rub back and forth on the front of her diaper. That's it. See? Feel that baby, that's just wet diaper, squishing against you. Only babies wear squishy diapers, not big girls. You're a big girl though, so why are you wearing a diaper like this, baby? This can't be. No, you're an infant? Is that what you're telling me? That you're pee pee and you're pooping in your diapers all the time? And that your daddy cleans it up for you, baby? Is that what you're telling me? And that's all you're going to be all day, every day, is just a big infant baby. All you're going to do is lay in your crib all day and play with your toys. That's all you're going to do, baby. That's all you're going to do, honey, for the rest of your life is just be a little infant baby. And daddy's going to take care of you. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. That daddy's going to take care of you and going to change your diaper. Yeah, baby. I'll change you all the time. All over the place. Yes, baby. Yeah, baby. Good girl. Good girl. The little infant baby. That's all you know how to do, baby. Yes. Swing your legs, baby. You're just my little infant baby. Oh, baby. Yeah, God, God, that's all you know how to say. That's all you know, honey. You don't know anything, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, sweetie. You're drinking your baba like a good baby. All the butterflies, baby. What a good girl I have. Yeah, baby. How does that feel? Mm, happy? Happy baby in her wet diaper? Yeah, baby. Such a good girl. <laughs> Just keep saying those words, whatever, just those trigger words that'll just fucking turn her the fuck on. And while I'm doing this and while she's gyrating and while she's getting turned on, I'm getting fucking turned on. I got a heart on my pants. I can't do anything about it, though. But I figured, OK, I'm just rubbing the front of her diaper and I'm helping her out. And so she finished multiple times. I mean, fucking a she loved it. So uh, but again, um, I I guess you can say it got sexual, but it was really more for her. And uh, I never finished myself off there in front of her or anything like that. Uh, that's for me to do in the, when I get home, you know. But um, but that was um, very erotic. It was very arousing. And, um, man, I loved every fucking minute of it. And so did she. But after that first session... Um, you know, she was very open with her boyfriend, and she told him everything. She was like, I'm going to tell him everything, you know. I was like, all right, I mean, you're going to do what you got to do, okay? I'm, I'm fine with it, you know. And, um, well, he didn't like the fact that, um, you know, that she got aroused and she finished, you know. Um, that's not something that I guess was um, part of the agreement. And, um, you know, she, she kind of got, you know, a little, not upset, but she's like got... Um, What's the word? Um, discouraged, uh, disillusioned. I don't know. Um, or maybe the ex first experience was just a, like a lot to process, you know. So we kind of stopped talking. We kind of stopped talking for about a good two and a half, three months. And which was a shame because I was like, man, I, you know, um, we hit it off. I was hoping that it become a regular thing. But I knew that if it became a regular thing, that eventually something would have happened. Something not so good would have happened because that's how strong the chemistry was between us. 
And so, uh, unfortunately, she, you know, she, we stopped communication. But then in March, early March, she reached out again. Hey, what's going on? Um, I'm trying to follow. I was trying to look at your, your daddy page, and uh, I'm not following you anymore. Because when we stopped talking, she says, I'm not going to do this shit anymore. I, I, I thought she meant I'm not going to be little anymore. And um, so we, we just, you know, we unfollowed each other. I unfollowed her or whatever because she went MIA. And then uh, I said, no, I thought you just didn't want anything to do with me anymore. And um, she goes, no, no, you misunderstood and blah, blah, blah. So we started talking again. And she said, my boyfriend would let me see you again as long as we really behave this time. And, you know, and that's when the second incident happened. And yes, I behaved. No, I didn't do the rubbing, although I did say those words and they came close. But I held back. (laughs) I held back. Uh, But damn it, I wanted to fucking go all the way. But anyway. Uh, that was that, but, uh, you know, Hey, look, um, those are good experiences. Um, it was a good experience and, uh, you know, yeah, hopefully in the future, I, I find somebody else that, um, that I connect well with, uh, that, uh, that we can share this similar sexual kinky experience. So it doesn't all have to be playtime and yay, this is fun and passies and stuff. No, man, let's get fucking down and dirty. Let's get kinky, man. That's what I'm all about. That's what I'm all about. Anyway, (laughs) let's wrap this podcast up. I think we all know what kind of little I am. I am a sexual little. And um, and listen, you know, for the non-sexual littles, bravo. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you can um, get your diaper changed and not feel any arousal from that whatsoever. Um. There has to be some pleasure. I mean, like, right? I mean, you, look at the area you're working with. Look, the, there's, there's some fondling going on there. And there's nothing? Nothing going on there? Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. But anyway, kudos to you on that. Uh, but for me, it's all sexual, baby. Well, all right. Let's say 85% sexual, right? Because there is a part of me that just also likes to wear for comfort and uh, not have anything sexual related at all um, involved so um, but you know for the most part at some point I'm going to be finishing myself off before I take that diaper off so it is what it is anyway why don't we end this podcast now thank you once again for listening and if you listen to the entirety of this podcast in one sitting kudos to you i appreciate you thank you very much um if you have any sort of stories that you would like to tell me so that i can maybe say it on the air and you want to share it please send me an email at ageplayconfidential at gmail.com I'd love to hear them, and I'd also love to share them with your permission. If you want to remain anonymous, I'll make up a name. Don't worry about that. Uh, it could be your sexual fantasies that were fulfilled, uh, or it could be anything. Or actually, maybe if you want me to talk about a specific topic, you know, shoot me a message there, or you can shoot a comment below. Um, and uh, Or any other discussion, any other topic that you'd like you to discuss. If you have a problem that you want me to help you work through, we can do that too. I'll just tag it on to the end of my podcast. And uh, yeah, also uh, any sort of role play scenarios that you want to hear from me, I'd love to hear uh, what you want to listen to. So uh, leave a comment below as well, and I definitely will... Um, Uh, Make an effort to uh, make those dreams come true for you, little ones. Yes. So it is that time where I think we should all say goodbye. So sit back, get your favorite teddy bear, make sure that diaper's dry, get your little pacifier, and snuggle up tight with your little caregiver and drift off to sleep. Okay? This has been... Another episode of Age Play Confidential with your host, Super B. Thank you for listening, and I hope to hear from you soon.